This is going to be a short video on how to add complex vectors together. What I mean by complex vectors is vectors that do not just follow a perfectly horizontal or vertical shape. They can have an angle like this, and we haven't really added those together in class yet. All the vectors that we've added so far have just pointed up, down, left, or right. So you need to have a method of adding these together as well. As you can see, I've already connected them tip to tail like this, and I need to find the resultant vector that looks like this. The problem is I don't have a clear way of doing that right now. So I'm going to show you the method that we use for finding that resultant vector of two smaller vectors that have angles to them. So the first step is going to be to find the x and y components of each individual vector. And you'll notice when I do that, that the total x component of the two vectors working together and the total y component of the two vectors working together actually makes the total x component and the total y component of that overall vector, as you can see from my picture. So when I add those red arrows together, they make the total x component of the resultant vector. And when I add the blue arrows together, they make the total y component of the resultant vector. This is going to be a rule for adding all vectors together. The sum of the x components is equal to the x component of the resultant vector, and the sum of the y components is equal to the y component of the resultant vector. So we're just going to add those together to find the resultant. And the resultant itself, because you have its x component and its y component, using the Pythagorean theorem, you can prove that the resultant itself will be equal to the square root of its own x component squared plus its own y component squared. And because the x and y components are equal to the sums of all the individual x and y components, I can rewrite the formula like this. To find the angle, you're just going to take tan inverse of the sum of the y components over the sum of the x components, because as you can see, the sum of the y components make the opposite side, and the sum of the x components make the adjacent side of that right triangle created with the vector. So this is a process you're going to be using in a worksheet coming up, and throughout this unit in particular, and in future units as well. There's a lot of adding complex vectors together in physics, so this is going to be your first intro to that. We normally make a table like this when adding vectors together, where we can list the values of our x components of each vector, our y components of each vector, the sum of the x components and the y components, the resultant, and the angle. So I'm going to give you a few examples of using this. Let's say that we have these two vectors working together and we want to find their sum. I don't really have to connect them tip to tail, I just have to find their x components and y components and add them together, and that will be kind of the same thing as connecting them tip to tail. So when I use vector math, I find that these are the x and y components of my vectors. So I'm going to write that down. It's important to remember that right and up in physics are considered positive and left and down are considered negative. Positive and negative are going to be really important here because there are going to be times when the vectors work against each other. So you're going to have to be very careful about noting which vectors are positive and which are negative. So I can see for vector A, I have 5 pointing up, so that's going to be positive 5 for its y component, and its x component is 8.7 pointing to the left. So I'm going to call left negative and label that negative 8.7. And for B, I have 4.7 for my y component and 4.7 for my x component, and they're pointing right and up, so those are both positive. So the next step of adding these two vectors together is to find the sum of their x components and the sum of their y components. So that just means adding these two values together, and when I do that, this is what I get, negative 4 and 9.7. And so the total resultant, if I plug that into my square root formula, is going to be equal to 10.5. That's the total length of the resultant, and the angle is going to be equal to 67 degrees if I plug that in. And I can see that because the x component is pointing to the left, because it's negative, and the y component is pointing up, that 67 degrees is going to be in the second quadrant because it's negative for x but positive for y. So it would be right there and that is what my sum of those two vectors working together would look like, a 67 degree angle vector with a magnitude of 10.5 in the second quadrant. Here's another example. Let's say that we have these two vectors working together. Again, I just need to find their x components, y components, and then add them together. So students get a little confused when they see that perfectly vertical vector and they're not entirely sure about what the x and y components of that would be. Because it's perfectly vertical, that means that it's not moving in the left or right direction at all, and so it's not going to have an x component. So ax would actually be 0 here, and ay would be negative 10 because it's pointing down. And then for b, when you find the x and y components, you find it's 7.5 and 2.7. So adding those two things together, the x component is 7.5 and the y component is negative 7.3. And when I put that into the Pythagorean theorem, I get 10.5 for r, and an angle of 44 degrees as my angle. And because y is negative and x is positive here, you can see that that would be in the fourth quadrant, um, because that's where y is negative and x is positive, and it's at an angle of 44 degrees. So that's how you solve problems like this. You're going to get a lot of practice with this, and it's going to be super important. When you have more 
vectors in a problem when you have three or four or five you just need to make more rows for those vectors that you can then add together to get the total but that's all that you need to know about complex vector addition the best way to get good at it is just with a ton of practice